Okay, ready? Yeah, ready. Hi, and welcome to the very first webinar in conjunction with KL Fashion Weekend 2021. And today we are beginning our first webinar by speaking to the man himself, the one behind this whole idea, Mr. Dodi Muhammad, the producer of KL Fashion Weekend 2021. Hi Dodi, how are you? Hi, I'm okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, let's start right at the beginning because um, KL Fashion Weekend's actually been going for quite a few years. Right. So can you tell us a little bit about the history of this event? Well, we, we started Kuala Lumpur Fashion Weekend in 2011, uh, and then it continued until 2015. And then I stopped it for a while. After 2015, I was concentrating more on London. Well, it was then just a, a typical sort of consumer event. You know, it was just a, a, a series of fashion shows. And it was mainly to promote shopping, um, you know, uh, and Tourism Malaysia had campaign, sales campaign, nationwide sales campaign. So we are a support program for that. It was just merely that. But then uh, in 2019, I was uh, looking at doing things in Cyprus and also in London. So uh, when we went into the concepts that I have done in, in the past, my consultants in London were saying that maybe Dodi, this is the time for you to revive for the Fashion Weekend and uh, revive it in KL. So uh, the thing is, there were, that we, um, the main thing is, at the moment now, um, people are talking about democratiz democratizing fashion. So uh, limiting the roles of um, the middle people within fashion really as much as we can. The thing is, uh, so um, it's actually to really give freedom to all fashion practitioners to do whatever they, they aspire to do and uh, not to have any kind of unnecessary limitation. And even uh, for consumers as well, and you know, not just uh, fashion practitioners, but also consumers to kind of promote, also promote, uh, what to call it, ethical, uh, ethical consumption and things like that. So, uh, but of course, this is actually aided by digitization. You know, uh, so and also then then when then uh, COVID came when when COVID came, we needed to really look at focus on digitization uh, much more than we we used to. And I myself, I'm not a tech person really, but then because of COVID nineteen, I was I I, I I had to look into it. And then when I looked into it, and I thought that there's a lot of elements that could be applied to actually adapt to the whole changes and everything. And of course, at the same time, probably um, the aim towards democratizing fashion is, is a lot more, it's a lot nearer. It's a lot more, what to call it, reachable with digitization. Mm. So um, but anyway, we will talk further about the elements that we are including into Cal Fashion Weekend that is aiming at democratizing, democratizing fashion. Sorry, that's a bit of tongue twister. <laughs> Cal, yeah. Yeah. Cal Fashion Weekend focuses solely on local talent, Malaysian designers, right? Malaysian artists. Um, and so you're planning a different future for Malaysian fashion. Yes, yes. The thing is, um, we I I feel that it's, it's very important for for the industry, Malaysian fashion industry, to embrace sustainability and ethics. You know, uh, well, like everything else as well. But the thing is, within fashion, it's it's not. It's not focused upon at the moment. It's very much into. I mean, you know, it's it's always it's always about profit. At the end of the day, of course, profit is important. It's all it's all about business. At the same, uh, you know, we must uh, be more aware of what's happening around us. COVID nineteen came about because of pollution, right? So, uh, and the whole world is not looked after, and you know, so that's why we had diseases like that, and you know, pandemic. Uh, I mean, at such scale, you know. Uh, so the thing is, with the fashion as well, uh, you know, uh, we need to educate uh, the consumers about about ethical consumption as well, and of course, and and, and the fashion practitioners about maybe to really look into. Um, 
transparency in supply chain as well. You know, so uh, when, uh, when, uh, you know, when I said um, uh, ethical consumption, when, when people buy clothes, they, they don't buy just to buy, you know, but they, they, they would have to buy with some kind, some, some level of appreciation, you know, so, so then they don't, some of them, they just don't buy. And then, but then they, they pile up, uh, they, uh, then the clothes pile up and, you know, um, and then just, they just throw them away. And then at the end of the day, that actually creates uh, a lot of waste and that, that, could contribute to pollution, and also, of course, you know the the, the way uh, clothes and clothing has been produced as well, because a lot of people are just concentrated on profit; they don't care about the environment and things like mm -hmm. that. You know, uh, so that's why we this, you know, we're looking at sort of maybe building a more sustainable ecosystem for the fashion industry of Malaysia itself, you know, uh, and not just physically, but of, of course, without, but also spiritually, emotionally, there's a lot of elements that could be, you know, uh, looked into. Yeah. And do you think um, our Malaysian fashion designers, once we're not looking at just solely profit, they can actually yeah. advance, you know, with their designs and design for themselves, rather than just design to sell, you know? Yeah. Uh, the th the um of course it comes together like you know you you sell out of your i mean you design out of your creativity at the end of the day you need to sustain yourself and you have to sell right yes. but at the same time that has to be balanced you know in every way you know uh and of course i mean at the end of the day people i mean your uh when designers design something whoever buys is actually they are actually their fans you know they want extension of that designer the the what to call it the element that design it that they want to own in a way but the thing is you know um um so i, I believe that is you know there has to be a balance in whatever we do you know a designer in terms of creativity and also the 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 the, the, the consumers in terms of consumption then has got to be uh you know there has to be got to be a proper balance so that's what we um you know we're looking at also uh you know the nfts element in order to kind of give it give the recognition to designers creativity and also of course it, it it kind of um you know it adds value to the actual design and all and at the same time it kind of elevates the level of that creativity so, you know whatever the designers uh produce that becomes more of art to wear rather than just clothing yeah so um you this this uh, Cal Fashion Weekend has been described as a digital experience, physical and digital. So on the digital side, you've got the Metaverse exhibition. So tell us a little bit about that. Metaverse exhibition is um, it's a digital exhibition, really, but you know, uh, exhibition on the Metaverse uh, realm, really. So. Um, um, you know the whole, we 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 did the physical show. We 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 had the physical show at Rumah Tangsi, but at the same time we digitized the house. The Rumah Tangsi we digitized it, so people from any any part of the world can visit Rumah Tangsi digitally to look at the exhibition by the designers. But of course we don't. We have not gone to the level whereby they can actually participate in the fashion show, a proper moving fashion show just yet. But but at the moment. We start with uh, the uh, digital exhibition for designers, uh, so anybody from anywhere anywhere in the world can can come and visit the, the house. And this and is so the first the time it's been done. Aspect of it. Yes, yes, it is the first time it's been done. It's been uh, so far a lot of uh, the, 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 this has been applied to more. Um, Art, art exhibition, you know, but, but not fashion exhibition just yet. So we could be the first. Yeah. <laughs> That's true, actually, because mm. you can go in and uh, you can go into the Louvre, you can go into uh, the British Museum, all in a, in a metaverse world, and you can move around the venues yeah. in and out and look at all the exhibits. So this is yeah. translated to the world of fashion. That's quite exciting. So even if you don't attend the show, you can still see all the designs by the designers. But you know, over the last, since the pandemic, I think a lot of the main fashion shows in the world 
whether it be Milan or Paris or New York, have gone digital as well, right? But not Metaverse. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, they, they've not. I mean, they, 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 there isn't metaverse exhibition, you know, in those uh, in those uh, fashion weeks just yet. But the thing is, but so we well, we we could be the first, you know. But anyway, um, I'm I'm very excited about that, and uh, so the so that that exhibition will last for about six months, and then so we, uh, as as uh, uh, and then the clothing will be on our digital platform, uh, you know, Busana Boutique. Um, so people who they when they visit the exhibition, they can buy the clothes as well. You know, they can make order, they can, they can place their order for the clothes that they see. Mm. Yeah. Now tell me about on NFTs. on Busana Boutique. Sorry. NFTs. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. NFTs. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. there's something very exciting. NFTs mainly until now have been all about works of art. Um, yes. On yeah. various levels, of course. <laughs> I mean, what the owner thinks is art is put out there as art. Uh, and yes. You know, so yes. tell me about that. How did you build that? This is about acknowledging the fact that creativity, fashion creativity is actually artistic creativity, you know. Uh, so uh, it's about, uh, again, it's about giving that sort of uh, elevation uh, in terms of uh, um, appreciation, you know, for fashion. So um, again, as I said to you earlier, you know, clothing could just be clothing. People can just buy and throw it away. So with with more appreciation, you you love you 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 tend to put your love into it, and you will keep it. You know. So the thing is, so this is where um, that 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 actually uh, started it for me. You know, to actually uh, look at things in a different way. So to, for society to look at fashion in a more uh, appreciative, so a bit, a bit more with more appreciation. You know, uh, so um, so when so we created NFT for Kuala Lumpur Fashion Weekend this time. Uh, of course, we concentrate more on the bespoke fashion, more made to order. So it's not ready to wear. So but, so if if somebody were to buy a dress which is NFT, so you get a certificate of that dress, mm -hmm. and when you get the, the certificate, will contain your, your, the, as the owner of the dress as well, not just the 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 which the description of the actual design, who makes it, who designs it, but of course yourself as well because it's made for you. So there will be multiple. Uh, in, uh, of that design, you know, uh, uh, but the thing is, but the fact that it is made for you, it's yours, and then you know, um, then it, it uh, then you have that that certified, and then that's a, the, the certification is registered onto blockchain, and then so if the, when, uh, and then uh, so the actual digital certificate cannot be tampered with forever unless you change owner, but then that would be a different certificate, yeah. So uh, so it. Um, if the wearer or the buyer becomes famous, whatever they could also, so the actual dress could also be of, you know, could 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 elevate in values, yes, you know. So, yes. um, yeah. But but the thing is, yeah, the main thing is to actually give that recognition for creativity that's involved. Yeah. So that's the main key, really. But at the moment, of course, you know, when you talk about NFT, people will say a lot of people say to me, oh, duty, um, NFT is about digital uh, representation. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what what do you do with it? You know, only your avatars when you play games can wear it. I said, no, this is this is what you know. Uh, we are actually taking the best of both worlds, really, and make it sort of more applicable to our life. It's not just about sort of like you know sticking to some sort of definition, a very limiting definition. We're not like that. So, so the um, so I'm I'm actually maybe uh, what what we are doing is slightly different from the regular or ordinary NFTs. But it is still NFTs because NFTs basically is non fungible token, something that you cannot replace, something yeah. you give, that you give some that you as the originality and individuality and the uniqueness of that creation. It could be any creation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But tell so. me, how have the <laughs> Malaysian designers responded to that? Well, I yeah, uh, when uh, you know, I, I when I spoke to them, they seem to be very excited. I mean, sure. especially that the Thomas 
found me. I told her about it. She was like, oh, did you? I've got some, you know, uh, some uh, some coats that I made and everything. And, you know, so, so she's excited. So I'm, I'm glad that, you know, they're very open minded. But of course, I did ensure them it's not this, it's not totally or it's not exclusively crypto in a way, you know, in terms of the exchange, you know, uh, when it comes to um, what to call it, the business exchange, uh, tra business transaction. So the uh, we do, we also do fiat currency, which is also normal, which is, which is actually normal currency. So we will do, we will convert it into uh, into crypto. And then when, when, you know, when we took the dress and when somebody buys a dress, it's up to the it's up to the buyer. They want to go crypto or they want to go fiat currency, which is normal currency. If they want to go crypto, then it will be just a normal transaction, like NFT transaction. But yeah. then, if they want to go into normal currency, then it will convert for them to when it's but when when they when they took it off that listing, and then and then what then for designers as well, we we will sort of pay them in normal normal currency. So, oh. but of course, the, uh, it will go through that process. But it will become crypto first, and then uh, what to call it, and then uh, exchange into uh, normal currency. Yeah. So we make it sort of we make NFT more relatable. <laughs> so you know, uh, so it's not just um, you know something that is worn by avatars, but you know worn by the wearer, the, the owner itself. So, yeah. yeah, and and um, I think um, maybe for this particular industry, in terms of creative people, there may be uh, a fear of technology at that level, you know, because this is worldwide, um, yeah. you know, it's on the net. And uh, how do they uh, learn to do this? Are you also going to help the designers, you know? Yeah. Yes, I, I, um, we, we will make it easy for them you know we 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 understand what i mean you know the way they look at things you know so so we have to really kind of place ourselves in their shoes and then you know uh, try to make it relatable to them but of course i think you know it's it is a way of us sort of explaining it to them you know uh you uh, uh, so if the, and on all these designers i mean uh, you know i mean they they realize that they they cannot just stay where they were you know they have to move forward yeah. and you know um and of course and as well as we know it's only it's only uh, uh, at the moment it's only introduced by mainly the big brands like louis vuitton and all that those brands and even in Singapore it's just a spillover of that brands they don't do it for Singaporean designers but we do it for our own design our own designers you know but the thing is about of course as I said to you earlier as well we actually make it relatable and make it make it more uh, applicable for us you know um, so it's not something totally foreign we make it we, we turn it into something that we can relate to mm -hmm. you know I, and then the minute we and then now we've gone I myself, actually, when I first hear of NFT, I was like, what is this? You know, yeah. it's it's just, it could just be a fad, you know, it's, it's a trend and they would just go off, you know, but it, it seems to be here to stay. So I, then I, I studied more about and then and then i realized that there's a lot more to it and and again it it, it, back, it, it got it 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 sort of uh, boxed down to again you know to the mission of try of democratizing relatable to everyone it's actually huge nst now it's, yeah. it's huge you know? but yeah. shall we just you, go back to the beginning and tell us about um your relationship with my creative ventures, because they are a huge supporter of KL Fashion Weekend, right? Um, and and an enabler as well, I think, of yes, yeah, your production. Yeah, I mean, I, it wouldn't happen, you yeah. know? And the thing is, I, I'm the, uh, the, one of the, the recipients of the CIRG grant, Creative Industry Recovery Grant. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they, they so they are funding my whole show uh, again you know so i in appreciation to that too that's why i go into more areas that is you know like more sustainable to sort of you know i, I don't want to just do a show you know so it would just it has to have some form uh, some 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 results to it and that is more uh long lasting 
you know, and at the end of the day, whatever I, we do and what, whoever that, that goes into you know, creating a, a fashion event, they have to think of what it does to the industry. So that's, that's, to me, that is the main thing. Before I actually go into even planning the show, I have to come up with a story that is not just a story for PR, but also, you know, something that is, uh, that, that is practical, you know? Yes. Yeah, so uh, I'm truly grateful to my creative. You know, and of course, with my creative as sorry, <laughs> can I add something? I mean, uh, yeah. with my creative as um, you know, uh, with this, with this, with this, uh, what to call it, with this uh, help, you know, a lot of designers that will not be able to do any show, they, they are able to do the show with us through yeah. this uh, incentive, uh, what to call it, through this help, you know, yeah, through this grant, yes. Yeah. And it's been quite a long sort of dead period for creative uh, yeah. people because yes, you, you're stuck, you know, in four walls. And if you don't digitize, you'll be really left behind by the time things open again. Um, that really was the only avenue uh, apart from even bespoke because you couldn't go to their homes. You couldn't go to your shop. They couldn't come to you, you know. So yeah. I think it's it's mm -hmm. quite a period of time to be. Um, I don't know if idle is the right word, but to be, you know. So I I I think that because they were forced into this situation, people had time to be more creative, to plan forward. You know, I mean, we all dreamt of the day that we could go back to normal life and and what we would do the day everything open so i'm imagining that our designers would have been working on their creations you know during this time and so um to be able to actually have a show and you know um, yeah. with the limits in in numbers with sops you're limited in your audience but with the metaverse with nfts with the website the world is your oyster really and so it's I think it's a huge, huge, uh, mind-blowing leap, if you will. Plus, I don't think the Malaysian fashion industry has been very focused on by anyone, whether it's the government or, or corporates or any kind of, um, you know, um, assisted uh, assistance. Um, hmm. So I think this is really good for Malaysian fashion. We've got some very interesting designers actually uh, for KL yeah. Fashion Weekend. Do you want to talk a little bit about them? Yeah, we, well, uh, we feature about 28 designers altogether and uh, it, they're representing the whole spectrum of fashion, Malaysian fashion industry, right from the fresh graduates uh, who have just entered the industry to the icons, you know, people like um, Tom and Selfie, um, Zeng Toy, Lords, they are, of course, the fashion icons of Malaysia. Yeah. And, um, you know, and of course, Datu Jimmy also came and, you know, they, he, and also he showed his support. And, yes. you know, so um, we're, we're very excited and very happy with the whole result that we were, were witnessing at the moment. Yeah. What do you hope for now that you have done this great leap? into the digital universe. What do you hope for, for Malaysian fashion? Yeah. So the thing is, you know, uh, we have not gotten proper sort of infrastructure for the actual uh, industry itself, you know, and I just designers to, we're not, so the elements of the infrastructure are not closely linked, you know, and our designers don't even know what our people can do you know, in terms of production. So they tend to go to India, China, or Vietnam. So at the moment now, we look at ourselves. Let's look after ourselves yes. first, you know, and then <laughs> yeah. So we, um, uh, <laughs> so, um, so 
that's what we're trying to do. So like, you know, elevate the value, the perception, and, you know, at the same time, sort of, you know, I, we also, we're also um, involving ourselves with community empowerment. And also, uh, we also have programs with uh, Club Monita Icon Malaysia to kind of look at women, women entrepreneurs, people who are actually in fashion, fashion, production, you know, but not just designers, but also tailors, weavers, people like that. And uh, so we're trying to sort of like, you know, gather all these people and try to introduce them to our own fashion industry and try to kind of, you know, uh, put together everything, you know, um, and maybe we could be more self-sustainable, you know. Uh, and you know we, what? We don't really need to rely. Yeah, and you're, if you're talking about local Malaysian artisans, I mean, people who do yeah. bead work, people who do hand work, it's, it will be a challenge for them. And I feel it will raise the standards because if you get more work, more challenges, more designs to work on, you would definitely improve and be better. And I know that we have artistic people, you know, yes, yeah. in our population. Yeah. You know, uh because Malaysians are more passionate, really, you know, as we know, you know, even seamstresses, they, a lot of them, they, they do out of love. I mean, I, I know a lot of them that they are really, really passionate. So why don't we gather these people and, you know, um, um, and they, their level is not cheap labor, you know, mm. then our, our workforce labor, we are more artisanal, you know, which is, which is actually really for high Really, you know, but but of course we need to kind of you know put put them all together within sort of a, a proper structure and give them the, the exposure and things like yeah. that and, and and you know um so if that could be first of course you know maybe we could make our own designers you know look at our own fashion production capability rather than going out and at the same time maybe once we packaged all this book together I mean all the uh, uh what to call it uh, all the uh, this production together, maybe we can even introduce it to, uh, you know, to to uh, to foreign designers. Actually, I I did something, uh, you know, it's Zander Rhodes actually did something. Uh, what uh, uh, what um, got me to look into something before, and she even introduced me to Anna Sui. You know, so these are the, the kind of thing that we want to look at. And they were saying to me that maybe you know, if you could put all this people together, then maybe you could even introduce it to the you know. Um, more high end, more uh, high fashion designers, you know, because they they would appreciate this a lot more than, uh, you know, than going to places or regions that just do cheap labor, you know. Uh, so uh, I think this is very valuable asset for the country, really. So we have to really kind of look into this. Yeah, that's my vision. <laughs> part of my business yeah. apart from those whatever digitization that i'm looking at but i think it's important to empower our own people and you know and be together and look after each other yeah yes <laughs> not just create for tourists you know i mean just let's talk about weavers from Songket oh. to Tenun to uh the sabah and sarawak weaving it, it, it's just the work the, the craftsmanship is there you know, yes. craftsmanship is there. So, yeah. and, and once you, uh, well, monetize it or commercialize it for the sake of any other words, more people mm -hmm. will be drawn and, and encouraged to yes. uh, take part, you know, to become uh, artisans or weavers or, you know, um, yes. like for example, Indonesia, it's so well known as a, a nation of artisans, a nation of craftsmen. And really, yes. what's stopping Malaysia, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. There's a level of education as well, you know, the perception, you know? So we, we don't have to, we don't have to focus on how people, other people see us. We have to, how we look at ourselves and how we look at our next door neighbor, you yeah. know? So that's important, I think that, that's how we could create a more sort of, what to call it, constructive kind of uh, environment for everyone. Well, we're going to talk more about this. We have um, four webinars, right? Four? Yes, so four. tell us what, what our, our viewers can look forward to for the next, next few webinars. We've got some really exciting guests to talk who are going to come and talk to us, actually. 
So the uh, the other would be the second webinar would be with Ponzi uh, Wada Sual. She's a consultant to the uh, the National Museum. Uh, she's like a social activist and also um, re, uh, an expert in preservation and conservation of the Malay, Malaysian textile. Oh, wow. So she will be talking about you know evolution of uh, of styling really you know. Uh, and then uh, we will also, we will also have um, Latif Napoleon. I know you know you, you, it's you, you, no, it's also your one, one of your friends, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but some photographer. Yeah, so <laughs> he is. I, I you know at the time I didn't really know um, how big and well known he was. So <laughs> after that I realized, oh wow, he just did our wedding photos. You know, it must have been a real come down for him. You know? <laughs> And then you have, and, and, and he is now taking, he's now doing very high end fashion photography yeah. for high end fashion magazines. He's doing really well. Yeah. And he, he was a photographer for most of my shows in London as well, you know, and, and if you can see that our poster, you know, that was taken by him, that's his picture. So we were using that picture. As our poster, um, um, and um, so I got to know him through when when he was one of the photographers for Book Moda, one of the main sort of uh, magazines, fashion magazines from Italy, and then and then the next person is Jill Sinclair, the founder of Bespoke, uh, Bespoke and British. So she um, she promotes uh, high la life high end lifestyle brands. Of Great Britain, including uh, St. James's uh, Club and Hotel, and you know, um, uh, Royal Ascot as well, um, among the labels that she's promoting. So she will be looking at how we could do similar thing in Malaysia with our own brands. Ooh, okay. Yeah, so those are the four. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> we're gonna have to say goodbye to you for now. I will see you in the next webinar. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I hope everybody could hear clearly, even if they couldn't see us clearly. So thank you so much, <laughs> Muhammad. He's the producer of KL Fashion Weekend 2021. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you at the next webinar too. Bye bye for now. Goodbye.